Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Odin's Movie Blog. I am the critic who is a cynic. Hope you're doing well. And today we're talking about John Wick Chapter 3 because, as you cannot, if you couldn't tell already, I'm a huge fan of this film. I think that this film is actually one of the betters of the trilogy, to be perfectly honest. Story wise, I still think that John Wick 2 has the best story. John Wick 1, to me, as I think, is the most uh, consistent movie as far as the pacing and all the other things that go along with it. But John Wick 3 might actually be my favorite. And the reason why John Wick 3 is my favorite is because, to me, they take everything that the fans have been wanting, have been asking for, and have been loving about the previous films, and have basically turned the, turn that up times like a thousand. Because what is the one thing that most people go to see a John Wick movie for? The action, the fight scenes, the practical effects. And everything that they're doing with this movie hits all of those notes. Yes, it may not have as much of a story arc as some of the other movies. Yes, there is a character. A, a lot of people that I've been watching have been very critical of the new female character, the one that represents the high table that is introduced into this film, not really being that fleshed out. But in all honesty, I think that her not being that fleshed out is a good thing because what it allows for is it allows for us to have questions. It allows for us to say, okay, who is this person? What is their history? What is their connection to the high table? And how is the high table going to come into play as this universe continues to unfold? And so even when with I think the weakest parts of the film being some of these characters and how they are brought in I still honestly think that what they do is they recognize that the fans are going to see and going to support this film for one reason and that is the action and that is something that this film has in absolute spades I don't think anyone is going to be able to argue against the fact that this has some of the best hand-to-hand -hand fight sequences in any film. The night fight scene alone, within the first 20 minutes of the film, there is an amazing sequence in which knives are being thrown, knives are being pushed into people, and not only does it just look hyper-realistic, but it's all using practical effects. There is no use of CGI. And that's what I love most about this film is that as far as if you were going to compare CGI sequences to live action sequences, I would say it was probably close to 90% live action practical to about 10% CGI. Because there are a couple of effects that obviously would have been very hard to do just purely by using practical effects, especially when it comes to car crashes and actors having to fly off vehicles and things to that effect. But in the end, when a film is able to utilize their stunt teams, when a film is able to respect their stunt teams, which is what this film does, because remember, John Wick, Keanu Reeves himself has gone out of his way to support the people that he knows he relies on and needs for support. Remember when the first John Wick movie came out, he gave almost his entire salary to buying and to helping those people who were on set working in his stunt team various vehicles. And I think that that is something that is truly uh, just a, a mirac miraculous thing to see in Hollywood these days. No one's going to say that Keanu Reeves deserves an Oscar. No one's going to say that Keanu Reeves is, is one of the most, uh, you know, talented as far as actors are concerned. But I would say that he might be my favorite actor working in Hollywood today for the very reason that he gives his all every single time he's on screen. He knows what he is. He embraces what he is. But not just that. He's also just a downright good person. This is a guy that is good not only on the screen, but is also great behind the scenes as well. He is able to work with people. Notice how Halle Berry is brought into this. Halle Berry had had some minor fighting experience before doing the various movies that she was doing, but never to this extent. And yet, what does Keanu Reeves do? Keanu Reeves is fully supportive of her and helps her in this process to make sure that she looks the very best that she can. John Wick, you know, John Wick, Keanu Reeves, he does not care about trying to outshine anyone else. What he wants is he wants not only the film to look good and to be awesome, but he wants the fans to be happy. He wants the fans and cares about what the fans have to say, and this is something that is just so rare in Hollywood. Think about the last time where an actual movie is being made, and I'm sure there are some obscure films that one can think about, where literally the sole focus is how can we make our fans happy and how can we not go away from the formula that is working. It's very hard to find those examples. John Wick, to me, is the only trilogy of films that has consistently given everything the fans have wanted, have listened to the critiques, have listened to the desires of the fans, and said, okay, yes, absolutely, and understood that movies in general, though, yes, it is an art form, and I would say that artistically, John Wick Chapter 3 is freaking beautiful, because even in the fight sequences, even in the gore of the film, there is an artistic beauty within it. But that it's not just art, it's also escapism. It's also a time in which people can escape for an hour and a half, two, two and a half hours at a time into a world that doesn't have the same issues that we currently have. Where we can see people doing things that are beyond recognition, that are beyond what is actually normal. And we're able to kind of fall ourselves and lose ourselves into these stories, lose ourselves into these characters, and recognize that these are characters and these are storytellers that care about what we have to say. 
that they understand that we are consumers, that we are consuming their product, that we are buying their product, that we are buying their merchandise, their Blu-rays, their tickets, all of these things, especially in an age when all of these things are becoming more and more expensive. And what do they do? Do they say, oh, now we're going to put less money into the budget? Do, uh, you know, Are we going to put more CGI on screen? Are we going to give them less? Or are we going to give them more? And they have responded completely with, I'm going to give them more. And guess what? The audiences have heard this, have seen it, have recognized it, and now have rewarded them. So this is being reported from Deadline. The early box office numbers, of course, I'll do my full box office breakdown over on the Geeks and Gamers channel tomorrow when all the numbers come out. But early, you know, the early numbers seem to indicate John Wick Chapter 3 takes out Avengers with $56 million plus dollar opening weekend, but Endgame Best Avatar as second highest grossing pick ever at domestic box office. So we see that Endgame is getting very, very close when it comes to the domestic box office of Avatar, but also, too, it's going to be very close to overcoming the movie in its worldwide total as well well but here's the thing 56 million dollar opening weekend meaning that john wick is very likely on pace especially when you take in the worldwide numbers to be well over 100 million dollars this weekend yes this is not a franchise that tends to make you know you know hundreds upon hundreds of millions of dollars but you can see that trend and i showed this in a previous video when you go to box office mojo every movie has made more and more money why because when john wick one came out no one really knew about it only thing that people knew was like oh look it's keanu reeves being a badass awesome cool so but then people saw it and realized, oh my god, this movie is fantastic. This has some of the best stunt work in it. I'm going to go see it again. I'm going to tell others about it. And then everyone and their mom started to buy it on Blu-ray because it was so great. And so then when John Wick 2 came out, it made almost twice as much as the first one did. People said, oh my god, this is even better than before. This has even more action because they listened to the fans and they gave us what we wanted. More action, more awesome badassery. And so then all of a sudden, a couple years later, boom, we get John Wick Chapter 3. And what happens? We get more of the things that we love. Is there as much of a story in this one? Is there as much of a behind the scenes as there were in John Wick 2? I would say probably not. But I honestly think that there is a story. You just have to be paying attention. Obviously, you have to pay attention behind all of the awesome sequences and all the awesome sequences and fighting and battling and all that other awesome choreography you see on screen. But there is a story there. And I think that this, to me, is like a modern day novel where it literally is like a chapter. And that's why I'm loving that they're calling it John Wick chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, because it's almost like reading a book where you get to a point where all of a sudden, all right, something's about to happen. And then you flip the page, boom, chapter two, picks up where it left off, boom, stuff happens. Oh, wait, where are we are now? Something else is about to happen. Boom, chapter three. So you can look at this almost as chapters in a book or even as three distinct books. And as far as modern day Hollywood storytelling, I think that's a rarity. So often it seems like everything is just being forced. It seems like everything is just being made for the sake of making money. This is a film, this is a franchise that is not making the multi-billion dollars as some of the other films do, but is instead bringing in people who are passionate about the work, are passionate about the story, bringing in new people because everyone's saying, oh my gosh, everyone's talking about John Wick and how badass it is. I want to get in on that. And they're expanding and broadening their base. And that's why it, they could make, <laughs> they could end up making 10, 15, 20 of these films and they don't always have to have Keanu Reeves. As long as they stick to that same formula, I think these films will continue to make money. And the fact that even Keanu Reeves himself has said, hey, we're going to continue to make these films as long as the fans want us to make them, as long as the fans are happy, that to me is the best way to make anything, to make a film, to make a TV series. Because it's not about let's try and utilize and use the fans to make as much money as possible, but instead let us earn the money that the fans are going to give us by giving them the best product that we possibly can. And that, to me, is what the magic is about John Wick 3. That's the reason why I full, and fully, fully heartedly support this film and this franchise and tell everyone, go and see this film, watch John Wick 1, watch John Wick 2, and then go see this. Buy it when it comes out on Blu-ray and 4K and all the other ways that's going to come out. Because these are the films that need to be supported. The films that listen to the fans, hear what the fans want, give the fans what they want in spades and more, and continue to listen, to grow, and to expand. This is a rarity in Hollywood these days. We don't get movies like this very often. It's very easy for us to fall in and say, oh, but it's not a perfect movie, let me pick it apart. But this is a film that is meant for the fans. And to me, that's why it's one of the greatest film trilogies of all time, and why I think it's one of the best movies, definitely my favorite of 2019, and one of my favorites of all time. Anyway, what are y'all's thoughts about this? Please let me know your own thoughts on John Wick 3. I know that there's a lot of differing opinions on this. There are some people getting very caught up in the story. Here's the thing, though. The story still makes sense. Step back for a second and think, no, this is a logical conclusion. This is a logical step forward. Obviously, John Wick killing all these people is something that you need to suspend your disbelief for, but they set that up in the very beginning by promoting him as being this godlike figure within the Hitman community. 
And so I think that as long as we're able to follow that to its logical conclusion, all of these OP moments just make sense within the, stu within the realm of the story that has been set up for us. So the story and all those elements, I think, just continue to add to the allure, add to the lore, to the very amazing allure at that of this universe. And I can't wait to find out more, whether we get another movie, whether we get a series that's been in you know production for a while for stars, but that's more so to think with stars kind of falling and dying than anything else with the Continental focusing just on the hotel chain. Either way, I think any more of this story, any more of this universe is a good thing because it's an original concept that has begun, that has grown, that listens to the fans, and in the age of Game of Thrones, in the age of Marvel and Endgame, in the age of all these other things, I think we need and deserve movies like this. Go support it because these are rare. Let's show Hollywood we care about movies that care about us. Have a great one, guys. Please like and share this video. If you did, please also subscribe if you've not done so already. YouTube's algorithm is all over the place, so any support would be greatly appreciated. Thank you all so much for watching. Have a wonderful day, and as always, God bless.